Have you ever wanted to kill a God Wars dungeon boss without dying repeatedly? Or without having those measly 5 kill trips? Well, I have the method for you, and I will teach you everything you need to know about the 5-0 Krill Tutoroth Mage method that I learned throughout my 10,000 kills on this boss. For my equipped loadout, I went with full Ancestral for the chest, helmet, and leg slots. For the necklace, I went with the Occult. For boots, I went with Eternal. I went with the Unholy Blessing for the ammo slot, which is vital to keep those pesky spiritual warriors off your back. For the glove slot, I went with the Tormented Bracelet. For cape, go with any imbued mage cape. I went with the max one. For weapon, I went with the Tumakin's Shadow. This is the only staff you should be running if you're doing the mage method. And lastly, the ring, I went with the Ring of Endurance. You can swap this out for a magical ring, but I found it quite annoying running out of stamina all the time time and this ring helps counteract that quite a bit. My inventory was set up as follows. The Kodai Wand and Eldenis Ward to cast Blood Barrage, which is key to heal right back up to full HP after you defeat Krill. Five Sanfu Serums just in case a misclick happens and the poison needs to be taken care of. One Ceridome and Brew just in case the boss is not going down promptly and you take a few unwanted hits. Twelve Super Restores for all of your prayer management needs. Three Angler Fish to help with the trip start because it can get a bit dicey when you first enter the room. And one is needed to drop on the tile for the Red X method. Then I have one Stamina Potion which usually lasts me a whole trip even if that trip extends to over 100 kills in the bottom row i have my saturated heart to boost up my magic for even faster kills my gommel's hilt to teleport me pretty close to the entrance of the god wars dungeon the divine rune pouch which holds all runes to cast blood and ice barrage inside that pouch is blood soul water and death runes and lastly a teleport out of the dungeon which for me is a construction cave this equipment can be switched out to better fit your budget and items you currently have access to for example if you aren't 99 construction just bring tele home tabs instead the best way to get to the God Wars dungeon is with a Gommel's Hilt. After the change to combat achievements, everyone should have at least one. Even with the first hilt, you get three teleports to the dungeon, and using this method, three trips will last you a very long time. So unless you're playing six hours a day, you should be fine. I like to pray melee as I walk past the wolves. It won't matter if you are missing prayer points, because as soon as you drop in that freezing cold water, your prayer is going to drop to zero. Once I get to the other side, I like to drink one sip of Super Restore to get my prayer back to around 30. I'll explain why you don't want to max it out right away in a bit. Now, you just want to kill four imps and hop between two worlds until you get the required KC to enter the dungeon. The pattern I use is kill two, run over, kill the other two. Then hop, kill the close two, and move over to kill the other two. And hop back and forth between the two worlds you chose. By the time you kill the four on one world, the other four should respawn on the next world. Repeat this cycle until you have the required KC to enter the room. Depending on which level of combat achievements you have completed, you will need different amount of KC to enter the room. If you have not completed any, you're going to need 40 KC. If you have completed the hard task, you only need 35. If you have completed the elite task, you only need 30. And if you have completed the grandmaster task, you only need 15 KC. Let's get to the door and learn about Krill and his minions. Before going in, I want to explain how the fight goes down and everything you need to know about Krill and his three minions. Hey chump, you think you can kill me? I'm Krill Tuturoth and I have 255 hit points with an immunity to poison and venom. I can hit a max of 30 with mage, a max of 46 with melee, and if I feel up to it, I'll stomp you out with my special, which can hit a max of 49. If I do manage to hit you, I have a pretty high chance to poison, so you better make sure to keep your health up. My defensive stats are a plus 80 to stab, slash, crush, and range with a plus 130 to magic, so using magic against me will barely even tickle unless you have the almighty shadow of Tumakin. I am also not alone in my chamber, so meet my bodyguards. First, we have Balfog Kriath. He is a three-faced black demon who destroyed the desert city of Ulek during the God Wars. He attacks with magic with a max hit of 16 and has a total of 161 hit points. The next bodyguard is Standing Karlak. This ugly fella attacks with melee and his max hit is 15 and he has a total of 142 hit points. The last bodyguard is Zakon Gritch. Don't let this long tongue fool you. He attacks with range by throwing large snowballs at losers like you. He has the highest max hit of my three minions at 21 and a total of 142 hit points. His snowballs are so strong, you are going to want to make sure to pray to the gods for range protection. Thanks for that, Krill. Now let's take a look at the tile markers that will be beneficial when doing this method. I know there's a way to copy and paste tiles, but it took me forever to figure out, so I'm just going to show you for those that want to do it themselves. So, starting at the northwest corner of the chamber, count seven tiles south and mark it. I have it labeled as one. Then go two tiles to the east and mark that. This one is not necessary, but it is extremely useful, and you will see why when we get into the kills. Now count two tiles east and four tiles south and mark that tile labeling it five. Then count six tiles east and mark that tile labeling it two, and you can label it 
toilet food. This is a tile that you want to make sure that has an item on it at all times so you can successfully do the red X method. Food typically has the biggest hitbox, which makes it easier to click on. Now count two tiles to the east and three tiles south and mark that tile against the wall and label it four. Lastly, go four tiles to the east and go seven tiles north and label that tile and you're going to label it three. The numbers just tell you the order you're going to run in. So once you get around 20 to 30 kills, you should have the method down and you can delete the numbers if you so choose. To start the kill, you can pray melee if you think you're going to get hit by a kill, or you could wait for the prime opportunity to run in. I typically wait and make sure to always have protection from ranged on, especially when you're in cycle and krill has no chance of hitting you. If you don't have that protection on, the ranged minion is going to tear you up and make you have a bad time. Once your prayer is up and you enter the door, you're going to want to run to the tile number two to drop your food. Mine is an anglerfish. Once I do that, I find the most success running all the way south to tile four, waiting for krill to get as close as he can, running to tile one to start the cycle. Once you're in cycle, is pretty simple. Make sure you only attack Krill as soon as you hit the marked tiles. That way you keep him far enough away from being able to attack you. Once you manage to take Krill out, I like to stack Balfug and Stannin and go to town with Blood Barrage. This should easily get you back to full hit points. If you aren't full HP, keep Blood Barraging the last minion until you are and then switch to your staff to finish it off. Make sure to grab the food you drop so it does not despawn. I typically grab it once one of the two stack minions dies because if you do it before, the stack kind of gets messed up. Once the boss is at 10 seconds to respawning, I like to drop my food on tile 2 and run to tile 1 to start another kill. While showing you another kill, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks I learned throughout all of my 10,000 kills. The first tip is to make sure to keep your prayer points low enough where you won't waste a Sanfu Serum dose if you get poisoned. Even after thousands of kills, I still zone out and get hit every once in a while, and that leads to me getting poisoned. If you are maxed out in prayer points, you are going to be wasting a dose of Sanfu on just poison, so make sure to keep your prayer low enough to get the full usage of the serum. The next tip is to use Ice Barrage whenever you get low on run energy. Sometimes, RNG is just not on your side, and it takes forever to kill Zami. If you get low on stamina potions, or you don't want to waste a sip, you can freeze Krill during the cycle, which will allow you to stand still for quite some time. I would recommend freezing him every kill to make the boss pretty AFK, but freezing him seems to have a very low chance, and also sometimes you end up freezing the melee minion and not Krill, or vice versa, and it throws off the whole rotation. Also, if you get too low on HP, make sure to eat up before you get to tile 1. If you try to eat while running through Krill during the red X, it will cause him to hit you. This managed to get me killed a few times because I let my HP get too low and I wasn't able to eat while doing the red X method or Krill was going to hit me. I do recommend to stay above 50 hit points. That way if you do mess up, there's a low chance of you getting stacked out. I sometimes still play a bit risky and get low to like 20 to 30, but if you don't want to die, make sure to stay above 50 or 60. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this guide and learned something and now you're able to go out and kill Krill all by yourself. If you're interested in seeing how much I made from 10,000 kills at Zami, click on this video right here.